Suicide rates are at a 30-year high. Drug use, sometimes called the disorder of despair, is on the rise. There are a lot of unhappy people out there. Want to learn about how to be happy? Grab a coffee. Stick around. I'm going to talk about that topic. Welcome to 15 for Faith. Thanks so much for being here and for watching. I know that uh, beginning was a little bit uh, of a downer, but I do have a solution and I do have some ideas on, on how we can make inroads and positive movement in a direction to bring more happiness to people's lives. So let me start by just saying there's a lot of unhappy people in the world and that really does pain me. I, I hate it when I see that people are in despair and just feel bad about themselves, about their life circumstances, about whatever it is they're facing uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. It's frustrating and it's sad and I don't wish it on anybody. Um, I was amazed. I was listening to some TED Talks. I flipped through and watched TED Talks. I think they're great. Uh, there were two that really caught my attention. Both of them were uh, entitled uh, How to Be Happy, uh, which is the name of this one. And in, in both cases, I really enjoyed what the people, what the presenters had to say. Uh, what I was amazed by was that there were 3.6 million views on one of them and 1.5 million views on the other. That's a lot of people who are out there searching for some kind of way to be happy. Those were really good TED Talks. There was one uh, that uh, talked about adaptability. There was another one uh, that talked about giving uh, being the key to kind of happiness. I'm not going to disagree with either of those. I think those are wonderful ideas, uh, but I do have some problems uh, with a TED Talk and one TED Talk and that leading to happiness. Uh, there's two problems. One is I think happiness is the wrong objective. And the second thing is one video is not a solution uh, to how you find joy and happiness in your life. So let's just start with the first one. When, when I ask people about what they mean by happiness, they generally, and I've said this a thousand times before, usually on these videos or on my podcast, but what they usually say is they want deep meaning in life. They want joy in life. They want purpose in life. They want healthy relationships in their life. They want amusement and fun in their life. They want uh, to have a sense of purpose and direction. When they say happy, they don't mean happy as in, ah, I'm, I'm having a great time. That's a part of it, but it's not the whole thing. And so what they mean is something much larger than happiness. They're looking for really the right combination of those things, the right combination of healthy relationships along with the kind of job that they want to be uh, employed in, the kind of goals and dreams that they have for their life, the, the way the relationships work and what kind of relationships they want to be in. All those things are a part of a combination of things that they're really looking for in life. And so to limit it just to happiness uh, maybe isn't uh, the right objective. The other thing is, is that happiness is never permanent. It's not like you arrive at happiness and you never have an issue in your life again. The truth of the matter is, Happiness is something that you have occasionally in your life and that is there for a while, but life will undoubtedly bring something that brings pain and struggle and hardship to your life at another point. I mean, just think of it. You go home, you go to bed, you wake up, think of all the new things that are going to face you in the day. And so the idea that happiness is one thing that you finally land on is really kind of unrealistic. It's unrealistic to think you would ever be, quote, happy in the sense of just joy and no issues for the rest of your life. You will have some sadness and that'll be appropriate. There'll be some times when you're mad and that'll be appropriate. There'll be some times when you're struggling through issues and that'll make you stronger. There's all kinds of things that happen in life. And so happiness isn't necessarily, I don't think, the objective. Here's what I do think is the objective, a healthier objective. The objective is the ability to respond in healthy ways to everything you face in life. Let me say that again, a better objective is to have a healthy way to respond to everything that life throws at you. That to me seems like a better objective, mainly because you will face bad times. You will face frustrations. You will face things that are challenging. Those things are gonna to happen to you on a regular basis because the river of life keeps flowing. So the second thing I said, and this kind of leads to it, and having talked about the fact that life keeps going, um, the second thing is uh, one video, one solution, one idea on how to be happy isn't enough. If it were, we would all utilize that very tool. We'd utilize that video. We would 
employ that one video, we'd employ that one idea, that one solution. There would be far fewer people that are unhappy, and there wouldn't be 3.6 million people viewing a post in a TED Talk about how to be happy. Here's the thing. It takes daily practice. There is no destination you finally arrive at where you're happy. There is constant daily work to figure out healthy resolutions, healthy solutions, each day for each experience, each relationship, each struggle that you face. This is true of everything. If you look at sports, no one thinks that you're going to be a good team if you just give attention to your team and some of the stuff that you're supposed to know as an athlete for one day. You don't. You keep going over and over and over again. Good business practice isn't that you stop one day and decide, oh, well, my business is up and running. I don't have to do anything anymore. No, you know you do. You have to do maintenance. You have to do constant uh, reevaluation. you got to be thinking creatively all the time. It never stops. This is true in music. This is true in marriage. This is true in everything. And this is why, to me, religion and practicing of faith are so important and so valuable because the objective there is to develop a set of healthy values and responses to everything life will throw at you. Whatever life daily presents to you, the key is to have some way of, in a healthy way, responding to those things. That's the key. It's not that it's one day you arrive at happiness, but instead every day you have tools. You've built up tools, kind of an arsenal, on how you're going to respond to the way life uh, treats you and the things that life throws at you. These are methods for moving past the obstacles that you will face in life. These are methods for helping you understand how you can, your own thinking can cause you, uh, what, self-sabotage. These are uh, sets of values that guide you and direct you in ways that help you to negotiate and navigate life. I say it all the time. Um, I, well, I shouldn't say all the time. I say it frequently, uh, that, that your faith should help move you in the direction of the life you want to be living. It should get you there. It should help you. Uh, in that process. I am an absolutely firm believer that when you practice your faith, it will do exactly that. It will help move you past those obstacles in life. It will help give you a set of values, a foundation upon which your life is built, so that when those obstacles, when those challenges come your way, when you are struggling with issues, you have some way of responding, some healthy way of responding, so that those challenges, those uh, setbacks, don't destroy you completely. They instead actually, and this is the crazy thing about a Christian faith, they actually will make you stronger. That when you employ those methods and you face challenges, you become stronger coming out of them. And that's an amazing, amazing thing. Here's the thing. Will, pra will uh, practicing a faith help you to be happy? Yes, I, I think it will. Uh, if you practice a religion or a faith, will you uh, be happy all the time? Absolutely not. You will be happy sometimes, but you won't be happy all the time. There will be seasons where you're struggling. There will be seasons where you're working, and that's all good, too. That's all part of becoming a stronger person, all part of the way to respond in healthy ways to whatever life throws at you. Because here's the deal. Sometimes you will be hurt. Sometimes you will experience pain and hardship and struggle. Sometimes you will be sad. It's at those moments that you need something really strong, something empowering to help you through your life. So... I encourage you to do this. I encourage you to practice a religion. I encourage you to practice a faith. I encourage you to join a faith community, whether it's 15 for faith or whether it's brick and mortar or both. I highly encourage you because it's from those communities that you're able to get ideas on how to navigate life. It's from those communities that you find great support and great love, uh, people who care about you and will help you on your journey and on your path, give ideas and suggestions on how you might, in a more healthy way, deal with the issues you face. These are people who care about you and nurture you and support you. And so in those times when you don't have the strength and you don't have the things that you need, it's very possible that the people around you will, and they'll give you nurture and support and help you in that process. But the whole thing is this. I've said it a thousand times. Building your faith, your religion, on the ways that it helps you navigate life. Not once, not so that you reach some destination of happiness, but instead so that you daily can navigate life in ways that are healthy. That, to me, seems like a very realistic objective. You want to learn how to be happy? First thing is, don't set that as your agenda. Figure out ways to be healthy every day. Respond in healthy ways to everything you face. 
and don't let those challenges take you down. That, to me, is one of the great values of having a faith, and it's one of the wonderful values of being part of a faith community. Thanks so much for uh, watching uh, the video today. I really appreciate it. If you would, uh, please subscribe either to YouTube, and if you do subscribe to YouTube, hit the bell so you get notifications whenever I post. I post every Saturday, as you know. Uh, if you would, share this video. If you think it would be helpful to some people out there, join the 15 for Faith community. It's simple. Uh, it's free. And so go to 15forfaith.com, uh, subscribe, become a part of our online faith community. I will tell you, our online faith community is growing. Uh, it's a wonderful thing to get so many people that are actually engaged in this process of developing their own faith, their own unique way of approaching things so that their faith, their relationship with God, can help them navigate life on a daily basis. Thank you so much for uh, watching the video uh, today and for being a part. Thanks for uh, all your comments. Thank you too. I need to say something real quickly. I've had more people who have donated. Uh, another word of thanks to Ebby for an incredible gift and donation to support the ministry I'm doing here. I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you also for all the many people who make their comments and uh, add ideas and insights to what it is we're doing. I love the conversation. Listen, have a great week. Really appreciate you. Appreciate yourself. Keep developing that faith. And remember, a little faith goes a long way.